What's good, everybody? Today we're talking about domain and range of a graph. This is a student requested video. If you find it helpful, smash the like button for us. So the first thing we need to know is that domain and range is related to is a relation, right? We're talking about coordinate pairs x and y. And what we want to do in each of these graphs is identify what x's and y values are included. So when I look at my first graph right here, when we have arrows, that means that this line, this graph is going to continue going. So essentially, all these x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, are going to be included. So the way that we can represent this is all real numbers, meaning that any number on that x-axis is going to be included. Another way we could write this is negative infinity to positive infinity because we cannot list all those numbers. So we substitute negative infinity for all the negative numbers, positive infinity for all the positive. Now when we go down to range, it's going to be very similar. We're talking about the y-axis, and the same thing applies. When y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, it's going to be included. So our range would be negative infinity to infinity. And just remember, infinity always has parentheses around it. Now, problem number two, now they try to trick us. They don't give us a line, they just give us points. But this is easier than we think. So what we need to do here is to list our domain from least to greatest, meaning we're going to list all these x coordinates in order from least to greatest. So I have negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4. And then we're going to close this set of um, the domain set. And then we're going to go back to the range. The range is the same exact thing, but now we're looking at the second number in the order pair. So when I look at this and we do it from least to greatest, right? And please make sure you guys do it from least to greatest or else it will be wrong. And if the numbers repeat, meaning the y value shows up more than once, only write it one time. All right, so when we go to our y's, we're going to have 0, 1, 3, 4, let's see, 6, and 8. And just make sure that you guys double check, because I left my 7 out. I forgot this last point, so this ordered pair would actually, the domain would actually stop at 7. All right, so problem number three now, we have what we call a parabola, right? And when we look at this, when we look at this um, x-axis, what we should know is that as this is going down, it's stretching out further and further across the x-axis. So when we want to write the domain for a graph like this, we would put all real numbers. Or if we're doing an interval notation like we did right here, we would just put negative infinity, comma, positive infinity. Now, the y is going to be a little bit different. The y is going to have a definite value now. Because when we look up here, this is the highest point of the graph. And there is no graph where y is 5, 6, 7, or so forth. So if we want to express this answer now, what we're going to write for the range is that it's going to be from negative infinity, right? It's coming all the way from the bottom, and it's going to come all the way up to y is 4. And because it's included in the graph now, we're not going to have a parentheses. We're going to put a bracket around this, and this is our first three problems. Moving on to the second set of problems, guys. In our first graph now, it's a little bit different. So we have endpoints on both ends of this line. So we know that our domain, right, is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. But when we come down to the range, we notice that it's not going to get lower than these two points or higher than this point. So how exactly would we express this range? I mean, guys, we've done it before, right? So we know that it's not going to get lower than negative 1 or higher than positive 2. 
So when we write this in interval notation, we're going to have bracket negative 1, comma 2, and then we're going to close it back off with a bracket. So just please make sure that you guys pay attention to the lowest part of the graph and the highest part of the graph in a problem like this. Now we go over to another one, and they give us a circle. So anytime you have a circle, guys, just understand that infinity, negative, or positive will not be included. So when we look at the domains, it only covers these x values, negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. It doesn't cover positive 4, and it doesn't cover negative 4. So if I ask you for the domains, you guys would write this for, I mean, if I ask you for the domain, this is what we would put. We would put, and just make sure, guys, that you have um the right answer, meaning a parenthesis, or if you're using a less than or equal to sign. And this is what I mean. So we know that it's going to be from negative 3 to positive 3, and we have a bracket. Now, sometimes you'll see this expressed as an inequality, meaning x is going to be in the middle because we're talking about domain. And then the lower number, negative 3, comes first, positive numbers on the end, and we're going to repeat the less than or equal to sign. When we read this, it says x is greater than or equal to negative 3, which it is. It's greater than or equal to and less than or equal to positive 3. So that's two ways we could write our domain. Please make sure you know both ways. Now when we get over to the range, it's the same exact thing, but instead of moving from left to right, we're now moving from top to bottom or bottom to top, I should say. So in this problem here, the lowest part of my graph is when y is negative 1. So we have a bracket, negative 1 is the lowest point on that graph, and then it goes up to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, meaning 5 is my highest point, and it is included. So this is what the range would look like. Now, if we wrote it as a compound inequality, what we would have, and let's come right here, we would have y in the middle now because we're talking specifically about the range. And when we talk about 5 and negative 1, right, lowest part of the graph, highest part, we're going to repeat those signs, and we know that these two are included in the graph. So please make sure you guys know both of those expressions and how to write it in both formats. All right, now we go back and we have a V-shaped graph. V-shaped graphs are normally absolute value graphs. So when we look here, the one thing we need to know that this is not a function. When we do our vertical line test, we will notice that x will have more than 1 output. When x is negative 2, it will have more than 1 output. So we know this is not a function. However, we can still answer this question. So they asked me for the domain. Now I notice that the graph is not anywhere over here. Positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. Only when x is positive 1 or less is there a graph. So if I want to express this domain, what I'm going to do is two different things. I could put negative infinity all the way to 1, close the bracket, right? That's one way I could write it. Let's see. Or I could put for the domain that x is less than or equal to 1. So these are two ways that we could write the domain for this problem, right? All right. And then for the very last part, now we're talking about the range. What do you guys think the range will be? And when we think about the range, right, we know that this arrow is going down all the way to negative infinity on the y-axis, and this one is going to positive infinity on the y-axis. So we could write the domain as, I'm sorry, not the domain, the range as all real numbers, right? Because it's going to cover all those numbers on the y-axis. Or we could put negative infinity to positive infinity. But before we wrap this video up, we're going to go over three last key problems. Smash the like button if you found this video helpful so far. Let's go to those last three. Moving on to the last three problems of the day, guys. And I want to go over these because you're going to see them, but not as often, and teachers don't talk about them enough. 
So if they give us a line like this, understand that our domain is going to be one single answer. So we have x is 1, x is 2, x is 3, where the line falls on. So if I ask you for the domain, understand that it's only on x is equal to 3. So the domain would be x is equal to 3. That's the only x that the graph covers. It doesn't cover 4, it doesn't cover 2, it doesn't cover negative 1. Now the range is going to be just a little bit different. And the reason why is that this line is going straight up and straight down the y-axis. So every single y is going to be included. So we could write this as negative infinity to positive infinity, also known as all four numbers. So this problem number one, all right? Now problem number two is the same exact, it's the same exact thing, but now we switch to variable. Right, so our answer switches. So now we say, now we go to the domain, right? We see this line is running parallel to the x-axis, meaning every x, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, 0, all these are included. So my domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. Now, the difference now is the range. The range is going to be similar to our domain in the first problem. Why? Because when we go down to y is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, this is the only y included in this graph. So for my range, we would say y is equal to negative 4, and that's it. So these are the answers for the first two. Now, the second problem, the last problem, the reason I want to include it is because we're going to talk about solutions. So for this, when we look, this arrow is going down the y-axis, right? It's going to keep going down. And then when we look on the other side, it's going to keep going up. So what we notice about this is that for the range, it's going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? It's going all the way up the y-axis, all the way down. Now understand that as this going down, it's stretching further and further across the x-axis. So it's covering more of the x-axis as it goes on. So what that means is all the x's are eventually going to be included. So our domain will also be negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, sometimes what they like to do in these type of problems is ask us to identify the zeros identify the solutions to the graph and understand when they ask those two questions, it's the same thing. And they're talking about our x-intercepts. So they're talking about this point, this point, and this point. So let's give them a value. Let's say this was negative five, this is zero, and this is four. If they ask me for the zeros or the solution to the graph, right, I would come out here, to put zeros, use a braces, right, and just list it from least to greatest, negative 5, 0, or put commas in between all of them, close our bracket, and that would be our final answer. So we hope that this video was helpful on you, for you guys on domain and range. Student requested video. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. There will be a part two coming out in the upcoming days. Please stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for joining me today on Out 1 with Mr. Peters.